Welcome back, guys. Uh, got another update on the Amani here. He did bring some more parts over for me. And um, here's some of it. Like I did say, did tell you guys that he was getting a bumper. So that's the front bumper. I already got the old one off. It's sitting outside around the corner. Um, got all these brackets off. Painted them black. Turn signals are in. So all I gotta do is just mount it up underneath the car. Get that taken care of. Um, he did bring his... Oh, I'm going to get back over to this side. That's the back bumper, like I said he was um, going to get. He did get it. The only reason why I can't put those on is because I think when he took it to go get it tubbed a long time ago, I think they took the back bumper off. When they took the back bumper off, they kept the brackets. So he has no brackets and no bumper. So... He did order the brackets for it to come in. Now I know what you're saying, what you're probably thinking is, why is he putting brand new bumpers on a on a turd, but on a dirty car? But <clears throat> he's gonna eventually take it to a body shop, so at least they'll have it all on, and they'll just have to take it back off, I guess, to redo it. But anyway. Um, He did bring his buckets over, so I got one of those in, and it's real good condition. So he's got um, fiberglass front, uh, fenders at his other at his rental property, and he doesn't want to go fiberglass. He wants to keep everything still. So he's trying to sell those. He had them on Marketplace or something. Uh, these were sitting in the background, so he got asked more about his buckets than he did his fiberglass fenders. Uh, one guy said that he'll pay him uh, 1500 bucks for the pair. And dang, I didn't know. I mean, if you need them, I guess you'll pay that much, but Jesus, that's a lot. But anyway, he got uh, this, these brackets here for it. And this is how you mount them in. So basically, that door open. so this one sits like that, and then this little guy sits just like that. So that's what you have. So That one sits down there on that side. That little guy sits there. So what you'll do is you'll use your original mounting hole right here. You use that one. But then that little one will go up here in the front. That little guy right there goes right there. And then, of course, the other one on the other side goes down that way. So <clears throat> I just got them spot welded in. I don't have them fully welded in. Because what you do is you, once you get the seat where you want it, then you just weld all the way around them to hold them in. Weld down the sides. So I got to wait on him to come back over and sit down in it and see if that's where he likes it. So get taken care of that. Uh, he did, uh, oh yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this. This little plastic piece here it goes to the your gas pedal. It hooks into your cable and into your uh, gas pedal. He, I told him there was one over here on this floorboard somewhere. And I said there, if it, it's anywhere, it has to be over here. He said he couldn't find it, so I was out here messing with the seat, and, and there, there it is. I told him it was over here. <clears throat> Still gotta get that hole fixed on the floorboard. But yeah, so. And then on, let's see. And like on the back shocks here, we did 
discuss this too when he was over. And I think what we're going to do is he's just going to replace the shock that's inside there. Because this one is shot over here on this side. The driver's side one, it's shot. So we're going to replace both of these, put new shocks in them, and he's just going to keep this same setup. Yeah, that shock here is it's gone. You can push it up and down with no problem. But yeah, everything looks still clean. I mean, why wouldn't it? it hasn't been out in the rain or anything. So yeah, that's what we're going to do about the shocks. <clears throat> Another thing is, is, oh yeah, I bought that. It's a big block Chevy electric water pump with LS adapters. So you put these in on your LS motors and you can run big block Chevy water pump. I bought that for my car, so I'm going to be converting that over and getting rid of the factory one and converting this over. I don't like this piece here. Um, I don't like that. Uh, I'm going to end up, see if I can, can't find something like that if I need to. If I have to use something, I'm going to get a fitting like that and and get rid of this. I don't like that's ugly. That's just old house piping, you know. I mean, it works for the guy, but it ain't gonna work for me. I don't like it. So I get that switched over. Uh, we did. He did get the wheel tubs. We got to put all these. We got to put these together. Light on. There we go. So yeah. We got to put those together. Um, here it is, right here. That's not bent right there, it's just a shadow. Because if I move it, I'll see the shadow move. So I have to get those together. I have to cut along. Where the frame comes in, cut along through there, reshape it, so get that taken care of. And they'll fit down inside there. Fit right in there, get the wheel tubs in. Get that taken care of. Uh, you did buy a tack for it. Right here. Old Jags tack. He's still got to figure out where to get that mounted at, where he wants it mounted at. I don't think he wants to screw it into his dash anywhere. So he's got to figure that out where he wants it. Um, yeah. Uh, I got the shims here for the front pulley on the water pump. So I'm gonna shim it out and we'll put those up in here. And I think that's my problem where the belt's coming in crooked. So it's coming out like that. So if I can get, you can see it's not, Really low, not even down there on the on the crank pull either. So if I can get it to come out that way a little bit, I'll be good. I think that'll line everything up. As you can see, it's not lined up. So I think that's my answer to that. So get that done. Like I said, I get the bumper put on. So. Like I said, those seats look nice. Remember me see, saying something about the diode that's that we put in his straight down here. The old diode because it was getting a 
12 volt feedback and keeping the car running so we got that put in his so I had one order for my car and I got it in I'll show it to you so yeah this is out here on my car so out here on the alternator side because I had an external or internal and an external sitting over here up on the fire or the radiator core sport um, mounted over here so I had two of them so I want to eliminate one so what I was told to do was you got two wires down here one's a 12 volt coming out so that goes back into your other wire that produces the voltage too so I got that one coming in and crimped in on that side and then the other wire comes up goes into the original two wires here and comes around this way so that means you got your blue and white right here that goes into your brown so then I got the diode hooked in right here so I gotta cover all that up now the one wire that's left is red and it produces 12 volts also so I got that one sitting here so I think I'm gonna use that one for because that only comes on when you have your your ignition turned on it only produces 12 volts coming out of that wire so I think I'm gonna use that one for my water pump so it'll kick it on here so I don't have to run it off a switch or nothing it's just when it's fully powered when I turn the ignition on water pumps running so I don't have to mess with it the only thing I got to worry about is the steam port uh, vents tubes I gotta figure how to get these to bleed back into the other setup so I'll get that figured out I'm hoping I can maybe still use this somewhere in the system maybe cut this back a little bit and then cut that little skinny one over here and then connect that to the water pump and then that's going to solve that problem hopefully anyway if I went too fast on that you'll see it I'll make another video of it and see what I'm talking about but yeah so I got that I'll get all that taken care of so, yeah that's it guys yeah here's without the bumper on and I'll get the new one on appreciate you guys watching my videos the one that I the video I had of the um, I showing the rims after they got back from being polished and it had a leaky uh, valve stem in it and and talked about a few other things that video did real well it's like a 900 views that's the most i've ever had uh i know that's nothing that's chump change to anybody else out on here but hey that's something to me to go that far in views so i do appreciate it thanks like and subscribe keep it going so i can get up to a thousand maybe you never know who knows appreciate it see ya